Warning to headphone users, it's about to get loud. She's the girl next door! Nice but naughty, a heart that's pure. She's the girl next door of your dreams. <laughs> uh, I just had to get it out of my system. Okay. <laughs> this is a Benny Weir fan fiction and it is really good and I love Betty with the fiery passion he was my childhood crush so yeah this is just great this is perfect um <laughs> the author is amazing definitely go check him out the link to this fan fiction is in the description below so I would definitely suggest checking him out giving them some love dropping them a follow come on they definitely do not need the shout out they are they're amazing so just just do it, okay? Just just do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So this wasn't supposed to come out till next week, but the Sweet Pea fanfiction is really long, so we're gonna go with Benny because everyone needs a little Benny in their life, you know? So uh, let's get into this. <laughs> you rolled onto your back and stared at the ceiling above you. It was a chalky white sculpted to look like the waves of a sea. You'd always slept under that ceiling. There were small areas on the surface that were chipped, you used to have glow-in-the-dark stars stuck there. You'd taken them down when they quit glowing. It had just made you sad to look up during the night and not be able to see the green hue. You inhaled deeply and closed your eyes. Flashes of the fight with an elder vampire flashed through your mind. Sarah and Erica had been thrown backwards in one of his blows, and Ethan was helping Rory to his feet off to the side. The vampire was going towards Benny. Your eyes snapped open again. You groaned and flopped to your side. You raked your hands up and down your face, hoping to repel the images that had flashed behind your eyelids. You breathed out shakily and tried to calm yourself down. The fight hadn't been that bad. Everyone had made it out intact. You snuggled closer to the pillow under your head and stared at the wall. Your room was pitch black, the night sky not pushing light through your window. The fight had occurred hours ago, but it affected you more than some of the others. Ethan becoming a werewolf for 20 minutes had you freaked out for a while, but nothing as bad as this. Your eyes dropped closed ever so slowly and gently. You were mentally and physically exhausted. You could feel your energy draining out of you like air out of a busted inflatable. Images flashed behind your eyes again. Brimstar was walking towards Benny who was bleeding from his head. The old vampire's fangs were out and small claws protruded from his fingertips. Benny groaned weakly as the man plunged his hand towards the wizard's shirt collar. Stop! His blood is poisoned! He's bait! You yelled, slowly breaking the trance that had you pinned to the wall and helpless. You pushed your head up and squared your shoulders as Broomstar turned towards you. You had been charmed to stay put and only tell the truth. The trance was weakening since you had just lied to the vampire and were able to move your fingers and toes. You stayed perfectly still as the man turned his back on Benny. He and the seer drank a spell to kill you if you hurt them. Boomstar smiled, his fangs reaching the bottom of his lip. You swallowed deeply, trying not to blow your story. He had to believe it. He had to. You wouldn't let him hurt your friends. Your fingers twitched slightly, your telltale sign of nervousness. He snarled broadly. His hand shot out and he charmed his voice as he spoke to you. Your arms pinned themselves to your side and you couldn't move anymore. But tell me, dear, did you ingest it? Broomstar smiled when your face paled. You couldn't drink the spell you had made up. The answer spilled from your lips before you could stop them. The helpless feeling surrounding you. Benny was trying to get up to his feet, wide eyes locked on you. No, I didn't. Broomstar's mouth was open and his fangs were diving towards your throat. You felt the ghost of them scrape your skin, pulling a small bit of blood away. You closed your eyes, bracing yourself for him to drain you dry. Suddenly, he was being slammed against the wall across from you by a large, shimmering green hand. Benny controlled the magic appendage with a precise force you didn't know he had. Erica was in front of Broomstar in seconds and shoving a wooden arm of a chair through his chest. You felt his control over you disappear and you collapsed to the ground. You rolled onto your stomach and screeched into your pillow. You could still feel the ghost of his fangs against your throat. 
You threw your pillow across the room, knocking a lamp off your desk. You laid there for what felt like forever before the doorbell to your front door rang. You stood up and went to answer it. Your parents were out of town on a business trip and your older brother was playing video games in the living room. It was the perfect time for you to mope in your bed without interruption. Or so you thought. You took your time getting to the door, wiping the frustrated tears away. You inhaled deeply before opening the door. It was Benny, standing there twiddling his fingers. Hey. Both of your words were breathed out at the same time. You opened the door wider, inviting him in without saying it. He gratefully ducked his head on the way through the doorframe. He was taller than you were, but it wasn't that hard to accomplish that. You shut the door, the cold air from the outside melting into the warmth your house presented. Benny looked around while trying to take everything in. This was the first time he'd ever been in your house. How are you holding up, Elle? Benny asked. You saw your brother's head move a bit and you grabbed Benny's hand before pulling him into your room. Your brother wouldn't come in there after you two. It was an unspoken agreement between the two of you. You shut the door when the two of you got in. You flicked the lamp by your bed on. I've been better, but I'm still okay. How's your head? Your fingers grazed the small bandage that led to his hairline. His eyes followed the movement, but he didn't wince when you touched it. Grandma patched me up, so it'll be gone in a day or so. Benny nibbled on his bottom lip a little and you gave him a small smile. His hair was puffed up in the front from the bandage and his eyes were tired, like he could barely hold them open. You wondered if he was having the same issue as you were. Your eyes met his crystal blue ones and darted away. Thanks for what you did with the magic coal can, he whispered out. A small smile, one of pride, played across his lips before disappearing. He connected your eyes again and spoke. You almost got bit. You saved me and... and the rest of us, of course. We couldn't have done it without you. Benny said it seriously after stumbling over his words. His eyes looked down to your neck, where the tiny scabs in the shape of fang tips were. His face was barely readable. You saw two little similar marks on the base of his neck. They were way fainter than yours. It was only there because he seemed to have been scratching it, probably from remembering how close to dying or turning he had been. Your eyes trailed up and down Benny's face, your eyes lingering on his lips before moving back up to his eyes. More eye contact. You watched the beautiful blue eyes he had dropped between the two of you. He seemed to notice how close you were standing. You moved closer, seeing if he would move back. He did the opposite. His feet shuffled forward, you two still looking down at your bodies. You felt his side gently ghost yours. It felt like an eternity, you two looking up and making eye contact. It was slow, savoring almost. It was almost like committing this moment into your brains, into your memories. You gazed into his eyes, looking up through his lashes. He moved his face closer to yours, seeing if you would move away. You did the opposite and ghosted your lips across his. You could feel his plump bottom lip. You kissed him softly and felt him shudder. His hands found your hips and pulled you closer as gently as possible. His touches were so soft and gentle you could have cried. Your mouth moved against each other's, completely gentle and slow, like you had all the time in the world. You wish you did. He pulled back, eyes floating open as he looked at you. You yawned and he smiled. Couldn't sleep either, huh? He asked with those tired, cotton candy-colored eyes. You shook your head and pointed at the pillow laying on the floor on top of a lamp. He nodded before you pulled him to your bed slowly. The lonely floor pillow magically found itself on the bed and you two laid down. I might now. He laid on his back and watched you curl up next to him. You were laying on top of the sheets in case your brother came in. You put your head on his chest, listening to his heart thump in a rhythm. Your eyes drooped closed and you felt his breath even out rather quickly. No images played behind your eyes, except for the new memory you had just made with Benny. You fell asleep soon after he did. Only close death experiences could bring two people together like that.
It is currently 11.51 p.m. I should be asleep, but like, why not? It's Wednesday. I got school in the morning, but who cares? <laughs> um, this fanfiction was so good. Benny is so adorable. I love Benny. Have I said that? I love Benny. <laughs> um, make sure to go support the author again. They are very good. Love their writing. You know, follow them. They're on Tumblr. Link to the fanfiction is in the description below. And, uh... Also, very sorry that I haven't been posting this week, or last week. It's been very busy, and there's been family issues popping up, and then school issues, so it's been a little hectic, so, um, I think next week should be a little bit better. Everything should get back on track. <laughs> so sorry, guys. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go edit this video and then go to sleep, because I'm very tired. <laughs> good night, or good morning, or good afternoon, whenever you're watching this. I love you, and have a nice day, night, afternoon. <laughs>